Hello, welcome to this very special edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. Trumpeter, composer, band leader, and aficionado of the music, Theo Croker tonight is celebrating the record release of his brand new album, Afrophysicist, which is on the OK Sony Records imprint. And this trumpeter really, really comes from some heavy genes in music. In fact, his grandfather was the great Doc Cheatham. And this musician really brings a very, very special and unique form of dark funk, as what he calls it, to jazz music, which is an amalgamation of jazz, R&B, funk, and world music. I sat down early and we talked about this brand new record. We talked about his origins growing up in Florida. We talked about the legendary Dee Dee Bridgewater, how she's been a dynamic mentor to him as well as serves as producer for this brand new recording. And we also talk about the direction of where jazz music is going and how he's able to meet and bridge the generation gap. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Theo Croker live here for his record release party for the Afrophysicist here on the Pace Report here in New York City. Dee Bridgewater is your mentor as well as the producer for this record. In fact, Dee Dee's all on the record. She's <laughs> Tell me about the first time you guys met and she's been an outstanding mentor yes. to you. Most certainly. Uh, we met in Shanghai at the Jay-Z Music Festival or Jazz Festival at that time um, in 2000 and I b officially it's 2008, 2009, 2009. Um, and uh, I was in a band that was backing her, so we met at a rehearsal. It was with a big band, and we were doing her, um, her Ella Fitzgerald project, what, so the music from that, that record. And uh, we met at a rehearsal, and I proceeded to invite her out and take her around town. Her and her girlfriend, they wanted to shop, they wanted to eat, they wanted to see it all, so we did it. And um, after the show, 
I was I had another show, like an after show at the club that sponsors the the festival. And um she proceeded to come down and 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 sit in for almost the entire show and join us. So we just took it to the moon. And then there were a couple other times where well one other time when she came to Shanghai with Herbie Hancock on a State Department tour and um I was playing with a really out fusion band. And so she came down and saw that and then ended up sitting in with us with the cats his name is Alec Havik in the Friction 7 at the time so it's guitars and synths and wall pedals and all sorts of wild things and Dee Dee got up there and sat in with us like she was in the band so she got to see me in many different capacities doing a lot of different things in um in Shanghai so when we started to discuss doing a record or her producing me um she she really stressed that she wanted to kind of highlight those different settings that she had seen me in and not necessarily do a uh, like a just a traditional jazz record where we go and record she wanted to showcase the arranging the composing um, the support for, for vocalists that I can sometimes do and the large ensembles and small ensembles so that's how we ended up with such a wide you know a wide range of uh, ensembles on the record you know she she's on three songs she does yeah. save your love for me which when I heard it, I always think of Cannonball Adderley, of course, and 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 Nancy Wilson, Nancy Wilson yeah. and that Adderley, because he right. those those trumpet yep. solos ridiculous, and she does Stevie Wonder's "I Can't Help It," yeah, which is Michael Jackson, yeah, and then you guys hit Moody's Mood for Love, yes, well Moody's Mood for Love, I just wanted, I just at that time I was just really into that song, and playing it and learning it, and I thought it would be interesting, if instead of it being a male and female voice um that if it was a, a call and response between my horn and Dee Dee, because her, her voice is a lot like the trumpet so that that worked out really interesting um and you know moody had passed away the year we recorded it and i just felt it appropriate to to honor the jazz lineage in some way um by playing some sort of standard that that could kind of transcend beyond just okay we're playing a standard so I wanted it to have some kind of meaning if we were to do a jazz, jazz, jazz tune on the record. Um, and then Can't Help It is an arrangement I already had. And uh, I was just like, I, it would be really hip if Dee Dee sang a Michael Jackson tune. Because she's from a generation of funk and soul. You know, Dee Dee's first records are soul, R&B, pop. So um, I thought it'd be cool to bring out that side of her. Um, and, she, you know, she could twist it the way, the way we had it twisted. And with Save Your Love for me, she specifically said, I overheard her when we were on the road once talking about how one of her arrangers, a couple of them, have always tried to get her to do this song, and she's never wanted to cover it. She loves the song, but she's personally never wanted to cover it. And I said, okay, I'm going to find a way to put the right thing on this tune to have her go, okay. So I, I came up with the demo and sent it to her, and she said, okay, Theo, I will record save your love for me so I felt that was a mission accomplished
one of the most important parts of your musical learning is your teachers. And you've had four great trumpet players teach you. And we're going to break them down in okay. just a second. The first one is your, your grandfather, Doc Cheatham. In fact, Doc Cheatham was, I think, if memory serves me correct, Nicholas Payton studied under him also. Oh, uh, lots of lots of trumpet players, yeah, certainly. What was it about Doc and his palette and his range that differentiated him from a lot of the great trumpet players? Um, well, I, I think the fact that he could play the trumpet with such clarity and beauty at in his 80s and 90s and 70s, I don't think that's done uh, very often. Uh, the fact that he could he constantly reinvented himself uh, from playing in pit orchestras with Ma Rainey to playing in, in big bands to playing in uh, Latin big bands then to becoming a solo act um, the solo act I, he started doing that in his 60s so and and then adding singing to his you know to his bag later in his life I think the fact that he constantly reinvented himself um, is is really unique and just as a trumpet player he plays with such clarity and such dignity and it's just so it's just so beautiful it's it's just right it's just perfect and it's it's a difficult instrument to play in that way that that clean and precise so and he just got better and better with age and and something that i personally know about doc is that he you know he was checking out clifford brown and miles and and I, you know i i know he didn't dig freddie hubbard as much but he understood and respected what he was playing and roy eldridge and dizzy so people that were younger than him he was always hip to and listening to their records and and checking out how they're playing and incorporating that so he was influenced by everything from you know buddy bolden and freddie keppard and king oliver and louis armstrong to clifford brown and my grandfather spoke very highly of marcus belgrave and john faddis and Wynton marsalis and nicholas payton so he he looked both ways when it came to checking out the trumpet the next one is, and you won his competition, trumpet competition oh, yes. last year, yeah. Marcus Belgrave, and he's a friend of the Pace Report. I, you know, Marcus continues to teach. That's his mission. Yeah. He's got to be an EA Jazz Master because the talent that he has taught over the years is one of the most well-respected men in the game. Yep, uh, certainly. Jerry Allen, Kenny Garrett, uh, Kareem Riggins. The whole Detroit scene. I, I mean, Marcus Belgrave is, is, is an incredible pool of knowledge. Like asking him a question about a chord or a progression or a tune will always turn into a three or four hour hang, you know, around a piano or horn to horn. And he just never tires or, or you know, you, you never hear Marcus go, okay, that's enough. Or, you know, it just, it keeps going and going and going. And that kind of knowledge is just it's just so deep and he plays like that i've never heard marcus repeat himself or play any cliches or any licks or anything like that marcus is always just something new is coming out for him and like doc he looks forward and backwards with everything he checks out everybody's stuff uh younger older and he's he's just really dedicated to to helping you get it and another thing too he did so and blues yeah. and sh i mean yeah. his palette is ridiculous right and well like his gemini record that's a that's like fusion yeah and you know the tribe you know that's yeah this is it's his own own thing and and again with with a lot of my teachers marcus chose to do his own thing he chose to live in detroit he chose to have the tribe you know and regardless of how popular it might have been or how mainstream or non-mainstream he stuck with that so that's something you know they he imparted on me a lot of times i would call marcus from china being like man i don't know if i'm in the right place doing the right thing and he's like man just trust yourself stay with it i support you we proud of you you know you can always come crash and get some lessons you know always so it's you know it's a common thread through all my mentors to be myself another great trumpeter and we lost him last year was dr donald bird oh yes and He's another one who is almost like 
Marcus Belgrave in the sense that he was very, very learned. He he learned. He, yeah, he was a doctor and he was an attorney. Yeah, Do he was a lawyer. He was a doctor. He had a doctor in education. Uh, I mean, Donald Burr is a deep cat. Deep cat. What was it about him? Because we don't really talk about Donald Byrd as everyone should. Because, again, he's, like you said, he's deep. He did the funk stuff, but he did oh, yeah. the straight ahead also. Yes. I mean, I mean you know, Dr. Donald Byrd and anybody that, when you talk about him that knows him, always kind of laughs a little bit because he was an eccentric cat. You know, he had a wide range of, of moods and emotions. And he was very intense about music and education and 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 um, licensing and and deals, contracts, like owning your your work and maintaining it and and you know like being educated and knowing what you're doing and not just going with you know what's set up or the system and not being taken advantage of you know. So from a business standpoint, Donald Byrd really turned me on and showed me a lot of ways to make sure that I protect myself in the industry, in any industry, in any venture. Um, and then he was a dedicated educator. I would sit in his office at Oberlin for hours playing a tune backwards, forwards, upside down, you know, all sorts of things. Um, he showed me different techniques for writing to figure a tune out and to develop ideas and, you know, different things on instrumentation. Um, melody and groove were his biggest, biggest contributions. I would be playing something, and by the time he got done, um, say, no, take this out, try taking this out. And when you get done, you just have the grooviest, you know, something I thought was complex and hip. He showed me how to make that, you know, get right to the point of what I'm trying to play or, or write. So, you know, and he showed me a lot of things on the trumpet, even, even though he, he wasn't playing a lot at the time. You know, he showed me a lot of the, the fingerings um, that were passed down from, like, Dizzy. Um, and things like that, and a lot of his own fingering techniques that he had developed and uh, exercises that he had developed. He, at one point, sat and dictated about eight or nine pages of exercises to me, note by note, mm. note by note, and I, I wrote it down. Uh, so, you know, he really gave me some, 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 some special knowledge. <laughs>
That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. Reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank the talented Theo Croker for his time, as well as the legendary Dee Dee Bridgewater for her time. Also, the staff and management here at the Jazz Standard for their warm hospitality. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace.